Hello and welcome to Author Spotlight. My name is Lucy and this is a program on AADL TV where I am going to take about 10 to 15 minutes to tell you about some of the works by one single author. The author that I want to talk to you about today is named Tayari Jones and she has written four novels. She's probably most well known for the book, the 2018 novel, An American Marriage, which was an Oprah Book Club selection. She was awarded the Women's Prize for Fiction, an NAACP Image Award, an Aspen's Word Prize. So that book got a lot of recognition. She is a New York Times bestselling author with others of her novels. And she's a graduate from Spelman College, the University of Iowa, and Arizona State University. She's currently the Charles Howard Candler Professor of English and Creative Writing at Emory University in Atlanta. Tiari Jones is from Atlanta. Atlanta is very much a character in all four of her novels. Each one of her four books deals with the ways in which people on either side of a relationship perceive that relationship differently. And one way she does this really successfully is that she has multiple points of view of, from multiple characters narrating each one of her books. This is something I really liked about her books. I think she does it very well. And it's really interesting to hear from one character telling you something that you've already learned about but from a completely different viewpoint. Tara Jones's first book is called Leaving Atlanta. Leaving Atlanta was published in 2002. It tells the story of the Atlanta child murders, which were a real thing that happened between 1979 and 1981. Over 28 children were killed in Atlanta. Most of them were African-American boys. And Tiari Jones tells this story through the viewpoint of three different children. They all go to school together. They all know each other, but each one of their points of view is very different. The first segment comes from a girl named Natasha who goes by Tasha, and she is just working to fit in with the other girls in her school. They're all fifth graders, all these students. And she's also realizing that her parents are getting divorced. She has been told they're just separated, but she learns from people at school that separated really means divorce. So this is something that she's contending with when the new, when this killing spree starts and when the news of it starts to break. Tasha's section is narrated from the third person point of view. And she encounters other students in her class, one of whom is named Rodney, and he's always sort of off to the side. Another girl named Octavia, who's very much an outcast in their class, and obviously comes from a very poor family. For the most part, the lives of these children is just the life of a fifth grade student. But behind it all, there is the shadow of these horrific killings that are going on. Rodney's section is the second section of the book, and this one is narrated from the second person point of view. And his section for me was particularly immersive and moving. He refers to his family members simply as father, mother, and sister, and he lives so much inside of his head that getting his thoughts in the second person really brings the reader into Rodney's head. Rodney says, since your words are almost invariably misinterpreted, you, avo you avoid speech in general and abstain entirely from rhetorical questions. Just gives you a little glimpse of what Rodney's like. He's very much a loner. He's shy. He's excluded. He doesn't have any friends. He has a father who's really, really hard on him. His home life is comfortable in a socioeconomic standpoint, but he just dislikes his father so much because his father is not kind to him. Rodney's also bullied at school. He's not popular there because he's bullied and because he's excluded. He's extremely tuned in to the social stratosphere. So getting his point of view, again, is really interesting, especially when we're hearing it in this you voice. So we really feel like we're there. The third section of the book is the point of view of Octavia. And this is narrated in a uh, first person point of view. So Octavia, we've learned about in the other two sections, and now we get to hear her story and how she's viewing these killings. As the story progresses, 
the history of the killings, the, the actual history is actually moving forward as well. So more and more children are getting killed. Because Jones tells it from the point of view of children who are sort of in the middle of this horrific ordeal, it's especially effective. Children don't have the same perspectives as adults. They don't have a long view about things. They can't place it in the context of any history. And so it's confusing and it's scary, but this is also the 80s. So they can only really get the information about this from what they overhear adults talking about and what they can see on the nightly news. The adults want to protect their children, but at the same time you realize adults really don't talk to children about scary things like this. And so it changes from being these children's murder to something that's actually happening to the adults. For a first novel, I was amazed by this book. I just think the multiple points of view and the multiple ways of approaching this situation are very effective. Uh, Jones herself had two members of her class who went missing or were killed during this time. And something that she does that's very interesting is there's a character in the book named Tayari Jones, who's in fifth grade with these children. And so she really is actually placing herself there as sort of an interesting reminder that it's real and that it really happened to her. Passages of this book are just devastatingly beautifully written. The content is so sad, but her writing is so strong. The second book that Tiari Jones wrote is called The Untelling, and this was published in 2005, and it also takes place in Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta is very much a character in each one of these books. It is focused on one family that is filled with grief. They have something terrible happen to them right at the beginning of the book. The main character's name is Ariadne. She goes by Aria, and she is in a car accident. Her father is driving. Her mother's in the front holding her little baby sister in her lap, and Aria and her big sister are in the back seat. And in the car accident, her father and the little baby sister die. And she now lives with just her mother and her older sister. And because they're left on their own, they kind of descend into a lower middle class existence. Aria and her sister Hermione and her mother all live with guilt for different reasons. They are angry with each other for different reasons about what happens. Hermione ends up marrying her father's best friend. So this is Arya's older sister marries a man who's much older than she is. And she leaves the house at 17. This sort of leaves Arya on her own. So we get a glimpse of, of Arya's childhood. And then we are meeting Arya when she's 25 years old. She's living with her best friend in that sort of rundown neighborhood in Atlanta. But she really likes living there. She loves the big old house that they have. She and her friend teach literacy at a nonprofit. She has a comfortable relationship with a boyfriend named Dwayne, who's a locksmith. She ends up getting pregnant, and then she finds out something else about herself through this pregnancy. And she goes back to this habit of secret keeping, which she developed after the accident. So this is a book where we're seeing when something devastating happens to children, how that ends up affecting them in their adulthood. Sort of a, a next gradual step from leaving Atlanta with the children alone facing the tragedy. Aria, because she was raised with so much anger, doesn't believe that she's worthy of love. She doesn't believe that she deserves Dwayne. And so she ends up keeping some secrets from him. Atlanta is really vibrant in this book. Um, streets are named, places where they go, different neighborhoods. And you can tell that Jones is really paying homage to the city. This book deals with themes of motherhood, with loss of children in various ways, with absent fathers, with family in general. And again, these are things that you see in all four of her books. The third book that Jones wrote is called Silver Sparrow. And this is a book that is definitely filled with secrets. Uh, the whole book rests on one big deceit. The first line is, my father, James Witherspoon, is a bigamist. And so this is the story of two families that have the same father, two mothers and two daughters. One of the daughters knows about the bigamy and the other family. The other daughter does not know. This story of deception is told again through multiple viewpoints. The first half of the book is from the point of view of Dana, who is the daughter of James Witherspoon, who knows about the other family. And she lives with her mother and he is in their house occasionally, one or two nights a week, but she's known all along. The other half of the book is narrated from the other daughter. 
Charisse, and she does, has no idea that her father has another family, nor does her mother know this. These two sisters live in the same city. They have different last names. They lead very different lives, but their lives do intersect and their father works hard to make sure that their lives stay separate, which means that the actions that their parents took are sort of determining the outcome of these girls' lives. Like Leaving Atlanta, this book shows what happens to children when they are forced to reckon with a very adult situation. The burden of suffering in this situation falls most heavily on the girls. Their parents' action has the most devastating outcome for Sharice and Dana. And as I said before, their lives have already sort of been determined by their parents' deceits. They have to decide eventually if they're going to accept the truth about one another and how they are going to live in this same space together. It's interesting that uh, Jones didn't choose to do a back and forth narrative. It's very powerful to get the entire story from Dana's point of view and then the entire story from Charisse's point of view. It sort of flips things a little bit from what you might have thought and it adds another dimension to the reader's perception of the story. It's hard to know here in this book who to blame and I think that that's part of the story that Jones is trying to tell us is that you just don't know why People might make the decisions that they do, and you can't make assumptions about how someone's life may or may not work out for them. The last book that I'm going to tell you about is the fourth novel, the one I mentioned briefly in the beginning. This is called An American Marriage, and it was published in 2018 to much acclaim. It is another book that is narrated from multiple points of view, and it is the story of Roy and Celestial. They are married. They are not married very long when something happens and Roy gets arrested he did, for a crime he did not commit. And he goes to prison. In a note about the book that I read, Joan said, all my life I've lived in a world where the men are under siege. When I was a little girl, there was a serial killer in Atlanta who killed 30 black children, most of them boys, two from my school. I was so shaken by this experience that it became the subject of my first novel. When I was in high school, it was fashionable for adults to refer to the boys of my generation as endangered species. And this goes into the dangers of police shootings, of the prison industrial complex, of the difficulty of navigating this world as a black man. That's what the story is about in some ways, as Roy is just assumed to have committed a crime. But the other big question that this book is asking is how incarceration affects more than just the person who is incarcerated. It affects all who are involved. Roy's life is very much in stasis. He was married for a year and a half. Now he's in prison. And so he has to hold on to what he remembers. And that is celestial. Their marriage being so short before he was imprisoned was for certain reasons, not necessarily the strongest of marriages. And so for celestial, who's outside of all this, her life is continuing in a different way. And this husband that she barely knows has actually been gone for longer than they were married. And so in certain ways, her life starts to move on in ways that Roy's can't. That's basically the crux of the book. And how is this marriage going to, to ultimately be impacted by this wrongful conviction, this wrongful incarceration? The narrative is is very tightly focused. And again, Jones is so excellent at doing these multiple points of view that you really feel like you're getting so many different threads of the story. All of Jones's four books that I've told you about today are very character driven. She really writes characters so well. Leaving Atlanta comes to mind specifically because I think of those three children's points of view being so different, but yet you feel very connected to each of them and you know the names of all the other children around them. And because we get the multiple points of view, all four of these books are showing you how the same situation can be very different for the people involved. It's interesting when you've read all of the novels of one author because you are able to see the sort of arc of all of the books and the themes and motifs that are very present in each one of them. I have to say that Leaving Atlanta, which was her earliest book, is really the one that's sticking with me the most. And I just think her success in 
telling that story from the children's point of view was so profound. So that is my spotlight on Tiari Jones. I hope if you haven't read her books that you do pick one of them up. You will not be disappointed by the strength of her writing. Next time on this program, I will be telling you about the author, Stephen Graham Jones. Thanks for joining me.